is sexual energy for men? Um, what, what does it mean? What, what does it mean for you as a man? What, what am I talking about? So, for many men on this planet, they have actually never experienced sexual energy. They've experienced a strong physical energy uh, in lovemaking, a physical erection, a physical ejaculation, uh, but they very seldom have actually experienced sexual energy. Very, very seldom. Most men have no idea what that is. So when I'm talking about healing a man's sexual energy, what I'm talking about is allowing the wholeness, the healing, it means whole, allowing all of his energy back, um, back to him, to give it back to himself. So when he makes love, he can, um, or when he lives in life, he can experience all of himself. He can feel his heart, he can feel his lingam, he can feel his belly, he can feel everything that he is. That we can have sovereign men appear on this planet again. Men who are standing in their truth and who stand in their love and who stand in their wholeness. This is what sexual healing is about. And how we go about this is one of the most important things is we start to look at the mind and what conditioning he's receiving in his ma mind about being a man, about being a sexual man. Because if the man, if you are receiving messages in your mind that says to you that your sexuality is wrong, it's bad, it's too much, it's too little, it's, um, it, for some reason, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be claiming the sexual energy. Maybe it's going to hurt someone. Maybe it's caused a lot of trouble on the planet. You know? Maybe it's caused wars and rape and murder and all that thing. Whatever, whatever sexual energy is being blamed for. If you believe this stuff in your mind, you, nobody's going to do it. Nobody, there's no one doing it for you. You are going to cut off your own sexual energy. You are doing it. So how do you stop? How do you stop doing that? And how do you find out what are the things that are conditioning you around your sexual energy? So today I want to focus on, on one of the key things that where men are receiving a lot of information about sexual energy on the planet. Where most men receive most of the information around sexual energy. And, and, and they consume this information several times a day. And this information is pornography. So, now stay with me. <laughs> stay with me here, because I'm not here to say pornography is moral or immoral, or I'm not really interested in those kind of labels at all. I'm not really interested in that kind of inquiry at all. All I'm interested in, in terms of pornography, is what kind of information you've been given in your mind and is that helping to open your sexual energy and allow it to flow through your being? Or is it shutting it down? It's my only interest. And I hope that's your interest as well. I hope that's your interest as a man, as a sexual being. Is this, the stuff I'm receiving in my mind opening my body, opening my lingam, opening my heart? Or is it shutting me down? So that's your question. When you watch pornography next, ask that question. What is it doing to my sexual energy? And when I say sexual energy, I don't mean is it helping you get to an ejaculation very fast. And that's not what I mean by sexual energy. I mean, are you feeling connected to a life force flowing through you that is waking you up, enlivening you, and giving you immense pleasure? So how do I tell you about pornography? Because mostly on this planet, um, pornography is made into a bad thing or you know women leave men when they find out their fiance is addicted to pornography they leave him you know that happens or you get judged for it or um you know there's a lot of judgment around watching pornography there's really a lot so when when you feel judged about something you start to defend it whether you might you know if you didn't feel judged you might not defend it you might not care so much for it but when you feel a judgment or you feel like you're not allowed to do that or you know somehow it's wrong there's like there's sometimes a greater attachment or defense of the thing appears than would be normal 
So it's a little difficult for me to talk about it um, because it's been so judged and men are so judged for what, for enjoying pornography, for having a moment to themselves, their own sexual energy, they can come as quickly as they like, they don't have to please anyone, they can just have a bit of fun by themselves, have some visual enjoyment and th th there's no one there over their back telling them to the left, a bit faster, harder, this, softer, they can just do their thing and, 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 and in, enjoy themselves. And so there's quite a defense around pornography. But what I've been discovering about pornography and the only thing I'm really doing here is asking you to, um, when I'm, what, I, what I'm going to tell you, just to ask yourself, is it possible, is it true? So my experience with, with lovers uh, in my life, I mean, I've had obviously many experiences, very beautiful ones, maybe not so beautiful ones, all kinds of experiences. But uh, what I have found is a lot of the time it's hard to actually give a man like a little bit of like to ask for something that I desire and if I think back on all my lovers I can think of very very few moments ever where he paused and said beloved what do you desire what do you want what do you like what do you like how do you like to be touched what do you want what do you like you know <laughs> very seldom this has happened to me um, and when I have asked a man for some 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 change in the sexual uh, meeting between us or taught him something Often I'm met with quite a strong resistance, and not just resistance, like a fear, and then that fear becomes like a hurt. Like he gets hurt just because I say to him, maybe you can slow down a little bit, or we can try this or that. Men often respond with quite a deep hurt, and what I feel in that moment is there's quite a fragility in the ego, and when there's a fragility in the ego of a man, it defends his true fragility or his true vulnerability, which is what's really needed if he's going to meet me in sex, if he's going to meet me in intimacy. You can't really ever be intimate with another human being unless you're willing to be a bit vulnerable, unless you're willing to take a bit of a risk there. And so a fragile ego defends the fragility, the true vulnerability of a man. And I can tell you, as a woman, but when I see vulnerability in a man, which is very rare, very rare, it breaks my heart open. I, I fall in love in that moment. It's just beautiful. And because I'm interested in men and life and women and sexual energy, obviously I ask some questions and I take notice of what possibly could be affecting a man and why he has such a fragile ego why is he so insecure I mean a man seldom will say he's insecure you know he'll pretend all kinds of bravado and arrogance and confidence um, to cover up quite a deep insecurity which you start to feel when you make love to a man when you get to know him and he's got quite a strong defendedness around any maybe we could try something different moment he, he, he gets quite a defendedness there so I asked the question, what is, what is that about? You know, what's, what's going on with him? And there's many things happening and everybody has their own story and their own life that's affected them. But one thing that's quite common on our planet or very common and affects a lot of men is the watching of pornography. And on one level, it, like I said earlier, it just looks like a bit of fun with himself and enjoying some visuals and having a moment where nobody's telling him what to do or how to be, <laughs> which is beautiful. That's great. But if we look at it and, and we feel into it, and I've spoken to different men about this, there is a comparison that starts to happen. A lot of men suffer from quite a strong comparison. And the masculine in women too is quite it compares a lot, which is really an awful thing to do, to compare yourself to any other human being on this planet. It's just, it's a great, uh, it's, a, it's a quality of deep self-hatred actually, to compare yourself to another human being and weigh yourself up to them on a beingness level, you know, like on, in your essence. So. What it feels like and what I'm hearing is a lot of the men watch, start watching pornography when they're quite young and their penises are still maybe little-ish, <laughs> whatever that means. It's, it's smaller than their full what's going to happen when they're growing up. 
Um, and even some men might not have, of course, many men are not going to have the size of penises that we see on, on, in the pornography. And there's a comparison. So firstly, he's not big enough. So he thinks, you know, I'll talk about this a bit more, but he's not big enough and he's not hard enough. He's not hard enough enough, you know, like in my, his erections might not last that long as they might last on a porn, uh, porn movie. Um, maybe he doesn't ejaculate in the same way. And really importantly, the woman he's making love to is not responding like the porn queen response. She doesn't have the same response. And it's certainly not constant. It doesn't, a woman, the woman in his life is not always going to respond like the woman respond on pornography always. So this creates, it creates in the man this profound feeling of inadequacy, which of course is going to become very unconscious because the last thing a man wants to feel is inadequate. So he's going to cover it up and pretend that he doesn't feel this with the false confidence or arrogance and we see that a lot as well but when we several times a day every time you push play every time you push play every time you push play on the pornography channels you receive the message that you are not good enough that you are inadequate in your physi physiology you're inadequate you're inadequate in your sexual response it's not hard enough, it's not enough, not every time she's horny or you horny, and you can't even admit that. And you don't affect the woman enough. You're not a good enough lover for this woman. You're not having the same response. She's not responding with the same sounds, the same movement, and as many orgasms as these porno queens seem to have. So you're conditioning yourself. You're programming your mind that you are not good enough. And what happens then? You meet the woman. <laughs> and, I mean, of course you'd love to have a beautiful experience. But as soon as you feel your desire rise, as soon as you feel that coming to your body, your mind says you're not good enough. You deny that. You don't want to feel that. You don't want to own that's in you. And you look at her... And you go, she's not good enough. Yeah. Her body's not good enough. Her vagina's not tight enough. She's not good enough. Whatever your mind, how do you project that on her? She's not a good enough lover. She doesn't know how to touch me. She doesn't know how to respond to me. She's obviously a bit frigid. Whatever goes on. You don't want to own you're not good enough, so you put it on. She's not good enough. And for sure, what I can tell you about that is it's not going to lead into love. It's not. There's no way it can lead into love if there's that kind of unconscious projection happening. You're not going to be able to make love. You're not going to be able to feel love. You're not going to be able to open, relax, become vulnerable, relax, become vulnerable, and open to this profound, magnificent sexual energy that is flowing through your being. And flow in that with her. So, just examine what I'm saying in terms of the content of pornography. Do you compare? Do you feel inadequate? What's going on with you? And another really, really important part of the story with pornography, really important, is that when you're watching pornography, much of the time you're masturbating and ejaculating. Much of the time. Now this is really important because, think about it. If a little child is five years old and the parents are pissed off at the child and they shout it to him or her for some reason, the child has a response. And if they do that a lot, there might be some trauma in the child's body. But if every time the child does something wrong, the parents physically beat the child, what happens later on in that child's life is that trauma is anchored in the body. It's actually much more difficult to move through an early trauma that has been anchored through the body with a physical beating or even a physical sensation than it is to move through something that is just a blah, 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 loud noise in the background. Much more difficult. 
So when you are, it's like you're programming your mind that you're inadequate, and every time you feel the desire rise in your body, your response is to masturbate normally very hard and very fast and ejaculate. So what you're training yourself is, this is, how you, this is what you're doing. When I feel desire move in my body, I feel I'm inadequate. So your mind comes in and I'm inadequate. And I have to fuck hard and fast and ejaculate. Sex equals hard, hard fast ejaculation. That's the, that's the pathway you've made. Again and again, several times a day, over years, over decades. Several times a day, over years, over decades. And this, however you feel, whatever you think, however defended you want to be about it, I can assure you, will not open the power of your sexual energy to flow through your being. It's not going to do it. It's not possible. I promise you. This is not the pathway there. It's not the pathway. And yet you keep programming yourself with a physical, profoundly, profound, the strongest physical anchor you could probably find, which is the, 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 the physicality of the sexual desire. There's a very strong anchor. So with that strong anchor, you're programming yourself for decades. You're inadequate. And sex is hard, fast, and it's all about ejaculation. Mm. So, just, just, just think about what I'm saying. And I know it might be new and you might not have thought about it before, but consider it, feel it, see if it's possible. What I'm saying is true. And then, if you, if you look into what I'm saying and you see, oh, wow, Wow, <laughs> she's right. You know, she's right. <laughs> I've been programming myself into the same kind of sexual mode over and over again. And when my, when my woman says to me, honey, but, you know, it's good for the first whatever, a few years or whatever, what, I really would like to try something new. And I shut down and get defended and protect anything new. I can't form new pathways of sexual love in my body. This is the only one I know. This is the only one that leads to any kind of satisfaction for me. It's like she doesn't really even exist in that story. She must just be there for me to have this experience. When she starts to exist, when she starts to come into her own, mm, I feel something, I want something, I like something. Ah, this is the interference. <laughs> so, just to tell you a little bit about a woman, woman change. The feminine changes. She's like the seasons and like the weather. She doesn't stay the same. What might open her in the beginning might not open her later. That sometimes the softest, most delicate, most slowest touch will send her far deeper into any kind of bliss than you could ever imagine deep, hard thrusting could do. And sometimes deep hard thrusting, that's going to do it for her too. But she changes. She doesn't stay the same. Oh, what else do I want to tell them? Mm. So true sex, natural sex, orgasmic sex, is about feeling everything. It's about feeling everything. And when women start to relax and move away from their conditioning and they find out, women discover, they love, love to feel everything, even if it's the most profound grief, the most beautiful joy, everything in between. Women love to feel. Because when women feel, they feel like they exist. They feel energy moving through their being. They love to feel. And so when they make love to you, they want to feel everything. Everything. And that means we follow the energy. That means we slow down. That means you let her feel every inch of your penis moving in her, in her, moving out of her, your breath, her breath, the skin against the skin. She wants to feel everything. So there's a huge amount I can share with you 
and tell you, but I want you just to consider this for now and we'll see where we go. I am planning an online course to help deepen into the subject, to help you find some profound mastery in your own being of following the energy, allowing this sexual energy to open in you and then to trust it and follow it and let you guide you deeper into the woman's yoni, into the sacred temple of her yoni and then into the deeper gateways all the way to her heart. I'd love to guide you into that. And this is not just for men, this is for women too. Because women, it's essential you start to learn about this for yourself and share it with the men in your life. So if you're interested and you'd like to learn more, I'm going to put a link below where you can subscribe to a mailing list. And as the course develops, I'll let you know. And when it's ready, I'll let you know. And I'd love to have you come along, become an apprentice to the yoni, become an apprentice to the sexual energy. Surrender to it. Let it teach you. Let it become your guide. Let it show you the inner guru, the inner master, who can say yes to energy as it is and who can say yes to himself completely and totally as he is and share this love in the world and with the woman he is loving. So I hope you come along and I have a lot more to share with you. <sighs> Much love. I love you. Namaste.